Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Asrar, and I'm a Senior Business Development Manager for Microsoft for Startups team. Today, I'm joined by our esteemed guest, Hanif Joshagani, co-founder and CEO of Simen, which is a very strategic partner of our Microsoft for Startups program. In the next 30 minutes or so, you'll learn about Simen and how its industry-leading customer engagement platform built on Azure is helping improve customer relations by combining behavioral science, artificial intelligence, and advanced analytics. At this time, I wanted to remind everyone of our Microsoft Code of Conduct. At Microsoft, we seek to create a respectful, friendly, fun, and inclusive experience for all of our participants. We encourage everyone to assist us in creating a welcoming and safe environment. As you know, Microsoft's mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more, which includes our startups. Now, how can we help create startups anywhere in the world to empower their businesses? That's really the question we ask startups like yourself and set ourselves to deliver Microsoft for Startups, a program designed from the ground up to reinvent. What's our role in helping startups grow? Seeing startups as a true partner across all Microsoft platforms, products, and business motions. Now, Microsoft for Startups is an exclusive program dedicated to helping qualified, enterprise-ready B2B startups rapidly scale their companies. We really do this by providing access to uh, trusted technology, including Azure, GitHub, Office 365, and much more, combined with access to customers via Microsoft sales and marketing engines, which provide a streamlined path for startups to connect their innovative solutions to world's leading enterprises. Now, benefits of the program are also focused on these two core pillars around technical enablement and business and sales acceleration. The first pillar is about access to technology, which includes access to Azure, powerful developer tools, including Visual Studio and GitHub Enterprise, in addition to Microsoft Power Platform and collaboration tools like Office 365. We also offer enterprise level technical support and architectural design sessions along with one-on-one -on -one consultations with our engineering teams. Now, the second pillar is centered around business and sales acceleration and connecting highly innovative startups with Fortune 50, 100, 500, 1000 customers with a streamlined path to partnership with startup engagement manager who is a dedicated resource to helping startups navigate their partnership with Microsoft. We also assist in getting startup solution listed in our commercial marketplace, so it's available for customers all around the world. And most importantly, we connect our startups to our Microsoft sellers who are compensated to sell your startup solution into their enterprise accounts to retire their quota. Attendees can learn more by visiting startups.microsoft.com. Now, with that, I would like to hand it over to Hanif to talk about Semen. Thanks, Astra. The first thing I wanted to talk about with respect to Semen is what we fundamentally do. At Semen, we're transforming the way large enterprises digitally engage with their at-risk customers. The way we do that is we combine our very dynamic and robust customer engagement platform with the best practices in behavioral science, and we have an analytics and optimization capability so that we can learn what's working and what's not and iterate at a fast velocity. The reason why that's impactful is because you get more customers engaging back, and as a result, you get more people either curing or reducing churn or reducing bad debt or improving NPS scores and doing it with less dialing and less of an operational footprint. So not only are you more efficient in the way you're engaging with customers, but you're also more effective. And it's all in our name. The mission of Cement is in a symmetrical, fair and transparent way to engage with these at-risk customers and mend what's ailing them so that you can create win-win outcomes for both the clients and the end customers. This is a circle that really defines the way we do our job at Cement. So if you think about Cement as a house, the three foundational pillars of the Cement house are the transactional customer engagement platform built on the best practices in computer science, 
combined with the best practices in engagement science, which is an infusion of like in behavioral science, psychology, engagement, best digital big engagement, best practices. So we have this transactional platform and we lay down and we productize the best practices in how to engage with consumers digitally on top of it. And we inject a ton of horsepower into that cadence using the best practices in intelligence and data science to learn about what's working and what's not so that we can iterate at a high velocity. And the outside of this circle is really the working motion and the circular loop. So we create these engagement strategies, we measure what's working, what's not, and then we iterate and we do that circle at a high velocity. So let's talk for a minute about the workflow that actually happens as we do this job. So if you think about most enterprises, or they either have a data warehouse or a billing system or system of record that's handling and is the source of truth on what's going on with the customers. Information is already being shipped from that data warehouse, for example, to call centers, to calling and dialing systems and so forth. So we're able to step in front of that data feed and ingest it into our platform and orchestrate very intelligent and dynamic customer engagement strategies and then deploy those customer engagement strategies either through our own communication capabilities such as email and SMS and peer-to-peer -peer, or if a big company is already reconciled in some sort of capability where our system is built in a modular manner so we can actually ship those messages and outreaches through their capabilities as well. At the last piece of this is we send all the data on engagement and conversion to our analytics database, which then surfaces robust analytics and insights into what's working and what's not, which not only allows us to understand what's going on in, on a real-time basis, but also then feeds insights into how should we continuously iterate and optimize these strategies. So if you think about the transactional platform itself, I wanted to double click on that and go one step deeper and say, okay, how is this platform made up of and what are the capabilities that allow it to do its job of creating these really smart engagement strategies? The top half of the square that you're looking at is really all about the orchestration of a very dynamic digital customer engagement plan. First, in terms of configuring the strategy itself, what to send when, what to say, what volumes to ship through which channels, and how do we accommodate all the business logic and the workflow complexity that an enterprise has aggregated over time so that you can create these really refined engagement campaigns while respecting all that business rules and business logic. That all happens in our business logic control module. The second part is actually designing the outreaches themselves, the look and feel, the communication, uh, the branding. All of that happens inside of our treatment planning module. From there, we actually then deploy all those campaigns every single day. And that happens through the self-treatment toolkit where everything gets deployed and all the data is surfaced to figure out what's going on, what's the sentiment with the customers. And finally, we have an operations module where it's like a knock system. It's like, what is going on? Where are the sense happening? Where is there a blockage? What's working? What's not? Where are the audits? Where can we go and queue and make sure from a regulatory perspective, everybody's getting the right message. If we want to have a look back to see what happened in history, where can we go and query those things? All of that stuff happens inside of our campaign execution module. So in terms of how we make this all happen, especially in light of the partnership with Microsoft, it's really, really interesting because we're a fairly young company that's been able to deploy to massive enterprises. And the way we've done that is through enabling the best of breed in technologies. On the security side, which given the fact that we deal with personally identifiable information is super important, we have a very, very robust security infrastructure inside of our instances and environments. And all of that is enabled through the Azure, through the capabilities on security that we have access to as part of our Azure instance. In terms of scalability, as, as you can imagine, whether it's real time in or in batch processes, we're dealing with somewhere between a half a million at a time, up to 10 million at a time in terms of volume of customers that we're ingesting and that have to orchestrate and send all this campaign stuff every single day. That elastic scalability 
again, is enabled through the compute capabilities and things like microservices and bus services that we've deployed through our Azure instance. In terms of advanced technologies, there's really two types of them. One is all the robust technology that we use to feed all the data into our Synapse database so that we can generate analytics that are robust enough to generate insights and knowledge. And the second part of that is the intelligence layer of all of this, which can really be broken into two parts. One is all the NLP tools that we use within Azure to drive and modulate sentiment based on how people react to outreaches, but also to run more predictions into, hey, there's a pattern here, there's a cluster here, therefore we should iterate and optimize at a high way so that we are always engaging with customers live and dynamically based on their current preferences. And finally, we started in Canada, but we are now a global company with deployments all over the world and being able to deploy our instances and infrastructure where the customer requires it. Because again, we have huge security and regulatory constraints around the customer engagements that we do. All of that was made possible through our partnership with Azure. So then I wanted to talk a little bit about where are we headed from here? There's some key investments, and this is not an exhaustive list, that we're making to make the system even more powerful as we move forward. So those key areas, one of them I already touched on a little bit, is all about leveraging various types of machine learning models and algorithms to add a lot of velocity to figuring out whether it's sub-segmentation or coefficient optimization, how can we be better at predicting what's going on based on what we're observing in the data, which becomes even more important as consumer behavior, sentiment, and circumstances changes very, very quickly, which is something we're experiencing in the world today. And the AI ML capabilities that we're bringing to bear will allow us to do that more and more. The second part of big investments is gonna be all around scalable workflow capabilities to handle business logic complexity. One of the things that we've learned is that as you're deploying to these large enterprises, the business logic and business rules that govern how they engage with their customers has been developed over a long period of time and is often very, very complex. And the ability to be able to configure a system to create these clean engagement plans while respecting all this stuff that's changing from time to time is a non-trivial engineering exercise. And we've been able to do that on our transactional platform, which leverages, again, .NET Core and configurability things that we've been able to deploy inside of our Azure instance. The next key area where we're investing more and more into is to make our analytics, which is enabled by Power BI sitting on top of a Synapse database, make those analytics capabilities more and more robust as we expose them to our clients, bringing them into the analytical experience. So they're going in there and trying to understand what's going on with the customer engagement strategies at a very, very accelerated rate. Finally, I mentioned with NLP, we're using it right now to modulate the way the engagements work so that you're going down a individualized, personalized pathway based on customer engagement and sentiment. The next investment into NLP that we're making, which we're using the tools within Azure to do, is to basically take those outbound engagements and once somebody engages back, drop them into a two-way conversation, which then will lead to higher rates of customer experience and conversion. And with that, I wanted to kind of bring it all together. So what has been the actual benefits to some of our customers as a result of bringing this platform and service to bear? So just an example of one of our large North American telco customers, we're ingesting over 600,000 at-risk consumers every single month, which means that on a running totals, we're in the millions at any given time. And we orchestrated really intelligent customer engagement strategies. The result of that was the number of people that were digitally self-curing jumped to very, very high rates, over 75%. The net outcome of that was they were able to completely shut down outbound dialing, which wasn't being as effective, and reduce inbound call volumes to the call centers as well, which allowed them to do two things, both reduce their operational footprint 
and make it more productive by focusing on better things than making collections calls. So that's the more efficient part of the engagement. We got more people to engage, more people to self-cure, and as a result, reduce the call volumes, but we are also more effective. With a lower operational footprint, the customer was still able to reduce suspension rates, which results in less churn, longer lifetime value and revenue on the customers, and less bad debt. And so the overall ROI was impacted by not only becoming more efficient, but more effective. It was a very big ROI impact. And with that, I'd like to hand it over back to Esra. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Hanif. That was great. I actually had a quick question. Having worked with enterprise customers, one of the many things that's important to them, obviously, is the speed of deployment. Now, I know the great thing about Cement is it's a cloud-born company, right? But can you please shed a bit more light on your deployments? Thank you. Sure. So the way we've set up our deployments is cloud-based. It's using the latest technology, but it's also super secure. So everybody gets their own instance. There's no shared databases. And we've been able to pass every security audit that we've been able to come across. The other interesting thing is that because we're exclusively focused on how to deliver to a large enterprise with lots of stakeholders and lots of bureaucracy, we've gotten quite good at it. And we have a program delivery and services team of project managers and client success managers that are focused razor sharp on how to deploy this quickly for a large enterprise. And we've been able to get those deployment times down to as little as eight weeks and typically between eight and 12 weeks. That's great. That's awesome. Thank you so much again. For the attendees and the audience, if you want to learn more about Microsoft for Startups program, please check out the resources. You can also learn more about Cement on cement.com. One thing that I also want to highlight is Cement actually has a solution on Azure Marketplace, and we have the link there as well. And please do follow us on our social handles to stay up to date. Finally, to keep learning about Microsoft resources, please go to microsoft.com slash learn to stay up to date. With that, thank you so much and hope you have a great rest of Microsoft Ignite 2020 and please stay safe. Thank you all.